Foot Clan, we have a great show today. We're talking bounce back players. These are guys that can make a huge impact on your team if you pick the right one in the right round. They can make a big difference. Make sure you like, subscribe, enjoy the show. I don't know who you are, but I do know what you need. I can tell you, I know some gentlemen with a very particular set of skills. Skills they have attained over a long career of studying tape and statistics. Skills they want to share to make you a nightmare for the rest of your league. Head over to www.ultimatedraftkit.com and order it right now. You will be prepared for your draft. Your league will be frightened of you. And you will kill them. Welcome. To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, prepare yourself, because it's football time for real! Yeah. Not kind of. Well, I mean, actually kind of. Well... It's still way better than the Hall of it's, Fame game. Yeah, you said for real. Yes. It doesn't count. I see what you're real saying. It's real fake? Yeah, I, okay, this is... Man, now we're getting you, deep. You realize we play fantasy football. <laughs> Nothing we do is real. Nothing matters. But the <laughs> games tonight don't go towards our fantasy football points, unless you can, you can play you can. DFS on this. So... Then it's real. Yeah, you all in on the uh, first quarter Matt Ryan DFS? No, 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 no. You don't go with the first quarter, guys. You got to go with the athletic backups. Yeah. It is football time. I'm sorry to disrupt. Well, it's, it's all you right. know, I I just don't want this football time to somehow mean as much as the football time that is coming. Well, it will not. Yeah, because those ones will count. But welcome into the show. Thursday, August 11th. Andy, Mike, and Jason, the fantasy footballers back with you. Preseason. Football is here. <laughs> Brooks, thoughts on preseason football? It's garbage. All right. Well, that's <laughs> a buzzkill. See, that's that's absolute nonsense because this is where like this is where real fantasy football stuff is happening. Of, is it though? What? I mean, yes. it's garbage. Oh. I'm with Brooks. It's garbage. Mike wow. and I, Mike and I are together against uh, you two. Yeah, is- it's it's fun. You get to see some players for the first time. You get to see. Uh, the movers and the shakers, you get to make your own judgments on like, uh, Isaiah Pacheco. Is it, is this real? Like, uh, can he actually, spoiler succeed? alert? No. <laughs> oh, okay. Wow. Well, all right. We'll, get, we will see. I guess it gets us closer to the real season. So thank you. Brooks. That's cool. Way to, way to glass house. Like we won. Goodness gracious. Um, Al, is this true? It is. What? Well, Did well, this that's... just come through the breaking news? We're starting the show. Breaking news. Uh, go ahead, Al. I'm going to let you be the source on this one. James White has announced his retirement. Really? Yeah. James yeah, he White. did from, from his verified Twitter account. So uh, the end of the career for James White. And Dang. There, were, there was talk yesterday about Damian Harris being rumored in, in the team moving on from him. I don't think that's as likely. <laughs> Maybe not, but but at the same time, the I I know the confidence in Ramondre Stevenson has yeah, grown has grown certainly. So interesting, James White, heck of a career, but uh, saying goodbye. Yeah, I mean, it's what he won that Super Bowl, right? Yeah, like uh, the 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 big comeback. He was the one who had that. The Did touchdown. he play with Tom Brady ever? Well, I'm just saying, like he was the one who scored the the game winning touchdown, if I recall. Best Super Bowl PPR performance in history. Yep, there it was. Thirty seven <laughs> and a half points. Yeah, I I think for for this year for the, the Falcons were a big part of that Super Bowl, oh, right? Man. They weren't a big part at the end. They didn't okay. do much. All right, they wow. weren't there for the fourth. Brutal. Um, go ahead, Jason. Uh, for for fantasy football, I, I don't think this really changes much of anything. I assume that you guys had the same view on James White that I had, which was that he was going to start on the pup, probably miss the first half of the season. And so when when when, a, when that's happening for a pass-catching kind of backup running back who hasn't been involved in years, he hasn't really factored into my rankings or, or, or anything. So uh, I won't be changing anything going forward. I will say this, though, since we're on the Patriots, since we're on uh, how this could possibly affect them, uh, you know, I've, I've talked up 
uh, my belief in Mac as a good quarterback, but this, the drumbeat from the beat reporters has been universally pessimistic over the last two weeks. They can't run the ball. They're installing a completely new running scheme for some reason. They were very good at running the ball, and they're like, let's try to do it different. Um, they've failed every practice at doing that. They haven't been able to move the ball, and we can't forget that they are going from what appears to be a good offensive mind. Um, you know, uh, he has Josh now, McDaniels. Josh McDaniels has moved on, and now you have a combination of Matt Patricia. Well, you have you have Gimli now, and Joe Judge oh, running this offense, and Bill Belichick. Sure, yeah, yeah. having having his say. I mean, it, there are. It seems like we are most often willing to be optimistic about a Josh McDaniels, Brian Dable leaving, going somewhere else, making a big positive impact. Whereas a lot of the times when someone departs, it's easier to dismiss that and say, well, they've ran the system. They have somebody that understands it. Um, and, you know, maybe that's not always going to be the case, right? Like these guys get paid a lot of money to do what they do and their absence is going to be felt. So it wasn't an offense for fantasy football in New England that you had a particular amount of confidence in any one player. Uh, the tight end room has two players that are going to be involved. You have a wide receiver room that have, you know, Jacoby Myers, uh, Tyquan Thornton, uh, Devontae Parker. Kendrick Bourne. Uh, I mean, there there are a lot of names. And then and then Mac Jones is still a young quarterback. And so if, if this is – if you're thinking about taking a chance on somebody, maybe this is a little bit more cold water on top of it, but – and the the last name I'll throw out here is just is Pierre Strong, uh, running back that the Patriots drafted. Who, like, just profile wise, he fits what James White. He looked like he could be that type of a player. So he I mean, look. I don't know where he was going in dynasty drafts. I mean, not in rookie drafts. I should say not very high. Like, there is a chance that he's just chilling on a waiver wire. It's possible. Yeah, and and so the the backfield. Damian Harris from Andre Stevenson, the guys of note right now, but that's a good dynasty name to monitor, Mike. Uh, UltimateDraftKit.com. Yeah. Uh, if you go over there, you will get access to everything you need for draft day, including sleepers, breakouts, busts, values, player projections updated daily. Uh, we've got player videos, lots of them. And uh, you can check out everything else that's included at UltimateDraftKit.com. Let's uh, let's jump into a quick question. Hello, everybody. I am back. Bounce back players for 2022. Generally values, if you can get them right. But uh, do you have a name that you want to bring up here for bounce back I 2022? Do. I do. I'm going to kick it off with Michael Thomas. Michael oh, no. Thomas. Oh, no. Now, I realize it has been a long time. It's been, it's been 84 it's years. It's been 84 <laughs> years since he's scored a touchdown, since he's been right on the field. He doesn't have Drew Brees, yada, yada, yada. The reality, though, is that he is back. He is on their practice field. He is uh, doing good things. The, the uh, you know Nick Underhill has reported that he's basically looking like the same Michael Thomas that he used to. And that he's starting to command more and more targets. You know, a, a while ago it looked like Olave was the target leader in camp. Now Michael Thomas is starting to reestablish uh, himself. And I think that he is not necessarily a bounce back to – I mean, obviously he was the wide receiver one in 2019. I'm not saying he's bouncing back to that. He doesn't have Drew Brees. He doesn't have Sean Payton. But I think he is not washed. Uh, I, you know, he's dealt with injuries. He is now back from injuries. They took a long time. You know, he's 29 years old. He's the same age as Devontae Adams and DeAndre Hopkins. And, you know, if, if, if those guys are great and drafted so high, I think that Michael Thomas is a discount for where he's going. And I think he's going to be fine. I really do. I've got him leading the New Orleans Saints uh, receivers, and I think he's got as good a chance – as anyone out there to be a solid wide receiver too, at least for fantasy. And that's a guy that you're drafting, you know, in the seventh round. Yeah. The draft cost makes me not push back very much, but 
you know, it will be a big difference going from 74% Drew Brees to 62, 63% Jameis Winston. And I, I've, I've read a lot of positive things beyond Olave about Jarvis Landry's camp. And so, you know, is Michael Thomas going to be 30% target share? Is the passing volume going to match? I mean, those would be arguments against him being what he was, but that doesn't mean he's not what you say he will be, which is a top 24 value. Mike, do you have a bounce back candidate for 2022? Yeah, I want to give some love to Lamar Jackson. It feels like he is kind of, you know, just like just there. He's yeah, that's what he just he feels like he is there. And looking at the ADP, he's going in about the you know the fifth round, which is the same round that Joe Burrow is is going in. And I you know I've made my case against Joe Burrow. Certainly could be wrong, but like like looking at Joe Burrow last year. He didn't have any 30-point games until the very end of the year, which he had a few really huge games in the playoffs that won people championships. And what has to happen for Joe Burrow's draft uh, draft price is the projection of they are going to throw more. They're going to speed up the Bengals' offense. Those things have to happen. Meanwhile, Lamar Jackson this past year, in limited in a limited amount of games, he already had – over he had three games over that threshold, and it wasn't as consistent as you would hope for when you're spending up for Lamar Jackson. But he was more of a you know like a third round type of a pick, maybe even in the second in a lot of home leagues. And now he's dropped into the fifth. That rushing ability is still there. He was over the over 760 rushing yards in essentially 11 games. Like the offense is still him. If J.K. Dobbins is actually back, the the offense will be. St- even higher powered, you know, they, they couldn't really do what they want to do, which is an establish it when you have these old crusty veterans out there just plodding along. Uh, it, so Lamar Jackson in the fifth round is someone who still, to me, has the ceiling of being a top three quarterback. I will agree with you. Oh, well, all right then. Since that's what everyone's waiting for. <laughs> no, I mean, I think Lamar it has a chip on his shoulder. I think he is something to prove this year, and I think he's going to remind fantasy players to keep his name in their mouths. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put it that way. Um, I will go with Robert Woods, and I, I want to kind of okay uh, narrow the focus to point per reception leagues, so full point per reception leagues. I think Robert Woods is going to, you know, he's thirty years old, and when I think of a, a, a kind of a comparison for what Robert Woods can provide right now, I think of you know, later career Emmanuel Sanders and having, um, you know, it took a long time for Emmanuel Sanders skill to diminish. It was really the end of last year and he's 35 years old now. So I think you see 80 receptions around a thousand yards and a lot of PPR value and consistency from who I think will be their first down wide receiver in Tennessee, Robert Woods. It will take time. Traylon Burks has more game breaking ability, touchdown um, size and speed, but, Robert Woods is going to be the beneficiary of a lot of play action, uh, a lot of uh, important plays for Ryan Tannehill, and every report from camp, you know, from the beginning to now, it's wild, is that he is fully recovered and healthy, and they're one. You know, right now we don't have Traylon Burks running out with the ones. Um, so, especially in the beginning of the year, I think he's a steal, somebody that you could put into your lineup and get value. So let me let me just do the yes no game on some more bounce back guys. Okay. You ready? Sure. Darren Waller. I will say no if we're talking about to superstar status. I still I yes. Yes on Waller. Matt Ryan. Yes. Yes to relevance. Fantasy relevance? Yeah, it's in like streaming and where like at the end of the year uh, at the end Matt Ryan finishing as the quarterback 12 or 13 to me won't be surprising. Allen Robinson. Definitely. Yeah, and they were we're all on board now with Robinson. Miles Sanders. I will say no. I don't yeah, believe he bounces back. Yes. If he, I mean, I don't even know what bounce back means with Miles Sanders. That's true. I think he'll stay <laughs> he exactly needs a, the he same needs as he's always been, which yeah. is eh, fine. Uh, Kenny Galladay. No. No. No hope for Galladay. All that money and I mean, um, look, you know, he's he's obviously the one. Absolute. I don't know if he's the one. Well, he's he's he is. I. I don't know. I know, like, financially. By plan. Is. By form of plan to start the year. I mean, we, we 
it's not in the news and we haven't gotten into the news yet, but the Wandale Robinson information, let's put that out there because sure. Wandale is established as the slot wide receiver in mm -hmm. New York. Um, anything positive you think about Brian Dable and what he's going to do in this offense, this was a guy that this regime drafted. They put him in the, in the starting lineup right away and rookie wide receivers with those opportunities, they just plain outperform the draft value. Yep. And yeah. Go ahead. I mean, the it's nice because their camp has solidified their pecking order. You know, you've got Kadarius Tony and Kenny Galladay as the one and two, and you've got Wandale as the three in the slot. I mean, that it's nice to just because there were so many people there, and it's like, how is this going to play out? And it is clear as day. Um, but I, you know, I I still don't know. You know, the one and two, Kenny Galladay will be the X, but I don't think he'll necessarily be the number one target. I think that's Tony. Okay. <laughs> Kenny G. Uh, yeah. There are uh, – I tweeted something uh, about a week ago that there are a handful of players in the NFL that aren't being drafted in any capacity but seem to exist just to take value out of the guys that are being talked about. Sure. I think Kenny Galladay falls into that category for the Wandale and the Kadarius Tony hype. But the other names were like Marvin Jones was being mm -hmm. undrafted and impacting Christian Kirk. Corey Davis, who was on pace for over 1,000 yards last year, impacting Garrett Wilson's ascension, at least at the beginning of the year. McCole Hardman, still around, still, still very fast, but could impact MVS having value. Nelson Aguilar, camp reports from him. It was more about like, too many bodies, right? Like yeah. too many bodies in New England's camp. Uh, Jalen Guyton, you know, hurting Josh Palmer and uh, his opportunities from time to time. I would like the Chicago Bears <laughs> to send a seventh round pick for Nelson Aguilar. Sure. I think the Patriots would take it, and the Chicago Bears desperately need that. Yeah, let's, let's I, make that happen, I Chicago. Mean, have you guys read what Bill Belichick said about Nelson uh, Aguilar? Like I have at not. least I don't know if it's salve, you know, saving the the signing, but can I guess? Yeah. He, did he say he costs a lot of money? <laughs> <laughs> he's he's got a cap at a fourteen. Yes, his million. quote was he's having one of the most expensive camps we've seen. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Nelson Aguilar sure costs a lot. He's dropping jewelry all over the field. Fourteen point eight million this year. Yeah, Whew. I mean, I've heard everything from potential trade candidate to having a great camp. So it's just there are players that exist to – and, again, I'm not taking anything away from them. They have an NFL skill set that is right. valuable to their team. So I'm not saying that I dislike them as players. I'm saying they are being disliked in the fantasy community by not being drafted. I think this guy could fall into that role, but DJ Chark. Do you believe in the bounce-back potential of DJ Chark? Versus ADP, 100%. Yeah, I, th I think he's going to be a relevant fantasy option for at least the first half of the year. And then uh, Kareem Hunt. Do you think yeah. bounce oh, yeah. back for Kareem Hunt, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. or is this the departure of Kareem Hunt, the working out of the system? Nope, it's a bounce back. He's got On, on the Cleveland Browns? It, yes, <laughs> on the Cleveland Browns for sure. <laughs> All right, any, uh, any other names that you guys have thought about lately? Oh, no. No, no we haven't really been considering. Uh, what, what if we throw out the name Curtis Samuel? Bounce oh back or I'll that's vote. not a name I've heard in some time. <laughs> I'll vote no. I'll vote no too. What is what it's, happened to that guy's groin? Ah, like he was the same free agent class as Kenny Galladay, right? Yeah, it was last so, year. So those players feel like their free agent signing was the deletion of them from fantasy football. That's what it yeah. feels like. Goodness. And Will Fuller. But it's like I mean, Curtis Samuel, they're talking about he's still banged up. Like what is going on, man? Uh, one more bounce back. Yeah. Okay. This one I believe in. Julio Jones. Okay. You're rising? I am. You're rising on Julio in Tampa I am Bay? I'm rising on Julio in Tampa Bay with Brady. Okay. All right. Is it? <laughs> well, I don't know. Yeah. I'm not willing to say that out loud because it's not going to happen. You're willing to whisper <laughs> it? That's why. Uh, let's talk news because there is some news about that wide receiver room. News and notes from around the league. Because Russell Gage, uh, it is a hamstring strain. Oh, yoo -hoo. It is considered minor, at least as uh, Ian Rappaport has reported. Okay. Okay. So I don't know if it's a yoo-hoo. Yeah. 
instead of a it's a bar- know, baritone. Yeah, I can't. Yoo-hoo. I was gonna say instead of a, and then I was gonna do the real one. Mm, but your but voice no. won't I allow can't, it. I can't yeah. do it. Uh, so you've got Russell Gage and Mike Evans both dealing with minor hamstring issues, and right now is a good time to have that if there is such a thing because Tom Brady is excused from practice for uh, some undisclosed personal reason. Salad and bar. <laughs> he's yeah. He's like, oh, dude, the salad bar is all you can eat. I gotta go, and the team completely understands because he's the plant man. He's uh, gonna miss some time, by the way. Yeah, it, it, that's what I was gonna say. It's an extended. Period. Oh, I, I hadn't heard this. Yeah, the, did, at least a few days. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. He's like, wait, my wide receivers have <laughs> hamstring problems. I'm not coming in. Uh, yesterday we talked about the running back rankings. Mentioned Javante Williams, Broncos running back Melvin Gordon was held out due to a foot injury yesterday. Team. The team says they are managing it. Okay. But this is one of those uh, built-in realities for Javante Williams where if something is even a – if it just goes a little bit sideways, you know, the world is Javante's oyster. Honest question. Just like James White did, Melvin Gordon comes out tomorrow, says, I'm retiring. I I don't like this. I don't want to deal with this foot problem. Where are you drafting Javante if – Th- that happened. Four. If, yeah, I'd that's say, what I was saying. The like, middle of the first round. Four or five at running back. Yeah, right there. I mean, at, you'd probably. I mean, Jason, would you? Would you draft him ahead of your two wideouts that you like? I don't think so. So, so I think five, it would probably six. be five for me. But I. But five for me means he's the running back three. I wouldn't be drafting him over Derrick Henry. Yeah, I, that's I, that's the spot where I don't think I would make that swap. But I get it. I and I totally understand that. I mean, we talked through this about you know the fears of uh, Derrick Henry. If, if if he's healthy and he makes it seventeen games, he's going to be awesome. Uh, but I would I would go with the youth. And we've been we have been here in our rankings. Like he was four before the re-signing of, of right. Melvin Gordon. Yeah, yeah. But yes, I mean this is kind of like what the reality was for Kareem Hunt. If Nick Chubb goes down, like there are situations where just a small tweak, missing a game or two. I talked about it working out for Javante. Part of that is the odds are so stacked against Melvin Gordon remaining heavily involved all year long because one ankle injury and one three-touchdown game from Javante and the pendulum swings. Like it, You have to have a perfect season as a veteran, Melvin Gordon, on what, another one-year deal? Yes. So, I mean, year. this is not the future of the team. Uh, Devontae Smith has missed the last five practices with a groin ah, strain. A groin! And um, also uh, groinindex.com. If 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 you're oh new, boy. if oh you're boy. new to the show, uh, it's a great resource uh, yeah. for all information about uh, groin injuries. So groinindex.com will really uh, bring your information to the forefront. Yeah, because I mean, sometimes you're looking at all the injuries, but you really want to you want to narrow the scope to mm-hmm. just groins. Mm-hmm. Groinindex.com. Uh, but you mentioned AJ Brown getting every target known to man in camp. Uh, does that have anything to do with five? Practices being missed by Devontae Smith. Yes. Yes, it does. I mean, it it is clear, though, um, that if Devontae Smith is out, I, I saw someone say again, this was like last night, that uh, they think A.J. Brown might get 200 targets. Uh, hyperbole. But that's what's happening right now while Devontae Smith is, is out. If he gets back, maybe it's 185, 186. Maybe 187. Oh, uh, come on. Murder, death, kill. It's a... It's a it's, it's a, a demolition man demolition joke. Demolition man joke for all the for all <laughs> twelve of you. You remember Demolition Man with Wesley, Wesley Snipes? Snipes. <laughs> so good. The three shells. Okay, let's go to Taco Bell after the show on? and we move can, on. Me and Jake can do oh, a we whole can do this podcast forever. on Demolition Man. It's so good. And you're you're free to. Just not this one. Uh Corlin Sutton returned to practice. Taco Bell later, Jay. Yeah. Well, I already made the joke. Yeah. Uh Cortland oh, Sutton. I Return to practice on Wednesday, Mike. Did you oh. ex- big exhale? Yes. Yes. Nikhil Harry, surgery. Forget about him. Yeah. Uh, any other news this morning? Any other retirements, Al? Are you maybe considering it? Maybe, hopefully? Not a chance. Okay. Yeah, I'm forced he- retirement will be coming. I'm hearing, <laughs> I'm hearing rumors on a very popular podcast that the, the Bears are going to trade a seventh-round pick for Nelson Aguilar. Ooh. You're hearing rumors on yeah. f- Source is a popular mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Demolition Man <laughs> podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right, quick break, and we'll be back with some questions.
one of the possible names of the show was just going to be uh, the 1990s talk fantasy football. <laughs> I mean, that was going to be part of – that was one of the names. All right, uh, since we have covered camp news, we've covered groinindex.com, we've talked about bounce back candidates. Why not a uh, mailbag drop? Mailbag. Mailbag. Yeah. Since we're so athletic, mm, yeah. yeah, which is how I like to start the sentences around here, but since we're so athletic, if one of us in studio here suffers – a groin injury, which Jason, I mean, he may do that sitting. Do we show I won't up? Do it any other way? Do we show up on groinindex.com? We really should. Yeah, uh, we, plug us into the uh, into the API okay. there. All right, uh, into the mailbag we go. If you have a question for the show, you can go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com, which has been recently updated. By the way, got a new yeah, homepage, got a fresh face. Yeah, uh, you can go there. Click the submit a question button. You can dial the voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. Let's kick it off with, uh, we got a voicemail, don't we? What's going on, ballers? It's AG from Daytona Beach. I love the show. I feel like we could be friends in real life. My question to you is, I went wide receiver heavy in my latest redraft league, and I want to know how confident you are in Saquon Barkley being my RB1. All right, take care, guys. All right, so Saquon as your RB one. If you already, if you have, if you went wide receiver heavy, I could live. I could live with it. Yeah. Um, if I'm if I'm wide receiver heavy, which is not what I'm doing this year, but if that's the way the cookie crumbles, Saquon and Elijah Mitchell as my running backs are the place I'd try to find myself in. Yeah, I mean, you know, people play zero RB and stack their wide receivers and grab a great tight end or a great quarterback along the way and end up with, uh, you know, hopeful running backs that can catch the ball a few times. Saquon is fine for your running back one if the rest of your team is strong. I don't – I mean, we, we discussed him on the last episode. I don't think he – is going to be this top five, top six running back, you know, a world beater this year, but he will be super involved, and I think he's back to health. Only 25 years old, I'd, I'd be fine with him as my RB1 in that situation. Uh, all right, another voicemail. Hey, ballers, this is Nick from Denver, Colorado. Unlimited. My question is, uh, is it a good or a bad strategy to take a, a stud wide receiver and a stud running back from the same team? Uh, so, for instance, JT and... Uh, Kitty City. Thanks for everything you do. Appreciate it. All right, stacking in a stacking a running back with a wide receiver. I am not actively trying to avoid or pursue this. I I am careful about it if I don't think I have a top eight offense in the NFL. Right. Because you are going you know, this team can score one time, you know, one player can score per drive. But it has worked out on certain teams and certain offenses over the years. I, I don't know if I'm willing to put the Indianapolis offense on that pedestal right now, but those are two players that are going to be the focal point of the offense, so it, you know it's, you could do worse. Yeah, in general, I avoid that. Um, there are some – if I can get Justin Jefferson to Dalvin Cook, yeah, yeah, no problem. Um, I, now, I like, I like M Michael Pittman, and I like – um, obviously Jonathan Taylor quite a bit. So that, that one to me is fine, but in general, I tried to avoid it just because it caps your upside. You get a little bit more consistent scoring, but we have been finding more and more that it, it really is the upside that will win your week, that will uh, propel you to playoffs and win your championship. And for me, like those two particular guys, like I don't like the draft cost of having to do that of of your your first overall pick is Jonathan Taylor and then Pittman is like a a back of the third early fourth round pick and like Andy's saying I'm not sure that that's the offense I want to do that in you know like if I end up with Austin Eckler and then Mike Williams in in the fifth or so that that's more that that's more agreeable to the way that I approach my fantasy football drafts though Okay. Yeah, I think that covers it. Uh, Instagram question from Paul. With Arizona's lack of running back depth, could Rondale Moore get used in the backfield this year? I doubt it because I think they're going to make a concerted effort to utilize him in the passing game. Yeah, I mean, I, I certainly think he will get 
a handful of carries. Uh, their re- handoffs for wide receivers don't really matter. Now, Debo is the exception, but Debo is the exception. Like, he was a running back and was unbelievable at it. You're not getting, you know, Robert Woods has done it before. Tyreek gets handoffs. I think Rondale That's a big gets, difference between occasional use. Right. And like core use, which is what Debo was. Exactly. And and he won't be core use. All of these players in camp that, you know, uh, Wandale Robinson's been getting uh, some handoffs from the backfield in camp. He'll, these, see guys, these guys will get eight, nine, ten carries out of the backfield over the course of the season, but that doesn't move the needle or shouldn't be a consideration for I've got to draft them because they might get four extra yards this game with a manufactured touch. It's just not, not something to consider. It's are they – a good wide receiver. That's what I'm worried about. And I doubt Cliff will give Rondale Moore a carry inside the five. Like if that was happening, they, okay, then that's that's a substantial boost to someone's value. The like old where chase, how, chase exactly, Claypool. The chase Claypool, but I don't see that happening for Rondale. What's ironic is a lot of his receptions probably count as runs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because they're behind the line of scrimmage. Uh, here we go. Instagram question: A player I'd love to talk about. Feel like you ballers have not talked much about Elijah Moore. Give us the rundown. <laughs> he is average draft position is the wide receiver thirty seven. We have him higher than that, a wide receiver thirty. Wow, I didn't see this disp- I, I'm the highest on Elijah Moore. Um I don't hate it. Uh, I did make an adjustment to him probably about two weeks ago. Just going back and watching some film, thinking about how Garrett Wilson will uh begin to work into this offense. It's a tough one. You don't start from a default place of confidence in the passing game. That's the biggest problem with talking about the Jets, right? I mean, you, you're you not coming with any sort of established baseline of production. And you don't draft a top 10 wide receiver and not use him. They always work out. They really almost always do. So Garrett Wilson will become involved at some point in a way that probably hurts Elijah Moore a little bit. Elijah Moore is, a, is one of the very few players, just like the, the previous season, I... I left saying I wanted to remember how much I love C.D. Lamb and T. Higgins. And that was Elijah Moore this last year. I wanted to remember yeah. how dominant he looked on the field, how good he is. He's full legit. And it's very, very, very similar to the T. Higgins situation because they go and they draft a top 10 wide receiver who might slot in ahead of him. But, but Elijah Moore's great. The big difference here is Joe Burrow to Zach Wilson. And he's really my fear for for Elijah Moore. Elijah Moore, some of his best games, like Most the rest of, of his the, best games, like the rest of the Jets, <laughs> were were without Zach Wilson behind center. So um, I do love the talent. I fear for the situation. Yeah, I and I think it's going to be my job this year to kind of try to persuade you to look at Zach Wilson in a less black and white fashion. Uh, that'll be his job. Well, yeah, he's going to work with me. He's <laughs> going to we're going to work to team up. We're going to work together. I like that. I like that. Yeah. I mean, it's not I can't do it by myself. <laughs> I'm going to do everything I can to get you there, but uh but I think I think there's potential here in the offense. Elijah Moore is very good. Yeah. I, and they and they did have connections. Like I know that the majority of the production wasn't centered on Zach Wilson, but he also like we don't know what he would have done in those games. Exactly. Part of the narrative which I'm helping to drive that is that Elijah Moore was great without uh, Zach Wilson, but then he got hurt. Like when, when Elijah Moore, when the offense was, was starting to become the Elijah Moore show, that's when he got hurt. And that's when Zach Wilson came back. So perhaps he had come back and still would have dominated targeted on 24% of his routes. That is an elite number for Elijah Moore that that's not going away. He is an incredible separator Garrett Wilson not proven yet in the NFL. It sounds like Elijah Moore is absolutely tearing up uh, camp. So I'm good with uh, I'm good with the draft pick of him in the eighth round. That's that's not a huge investment. So just it, he's one of those players where it's I'm watching the ADP. If it gets like six round after the preseason, then I'll probably be out. Yeah, my fear of Zach Wilson should really be thrown away because the talent of Elijah Moore. In the eighth round, he's going right now next to Hunter Renfro, Tyler Lockett, guys that are like, you know, they're 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 good players, but they're not going to win you a fantasy football championship this year. Elijah Moore has that potential. Yes, he does. I, swing for the fences and take a guy who's just 
could be a year two breakout star wide receiver. Well, it's well said because look at last year. If you want to wonder whether the question marks around quarterbacks and offensive line play and all of the offensive problems matter, Elijah Moore was drafted and produced as a rookie when given the opportunity. Zach Wilson was gone, and he still did it. Mm -hmm. Like the, the, the talent won. Uh, Mitchell in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. This is a very important question. Mm. Um, we were tagged over a billion times yesterday about this, and we need to address it publicly and and that's what we're going to do because we we hit things yeah, head, hard head on yeah. head on did you know that colt's tight end jelani woods is bigger than mo alley cox so what does that make him jelani forest oh okay i mean okay. i just that's low-hanging fruit it's just right there because you know i would imagine a forest is much larger than the woods so the hard part here is we need to know. we need to address the picture because the, there was a photograph we got yes. 80 we got 81 First off, Woods has the uh, the bonus helmet on mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that uh, makes the helmet extremely large. And what they don't tell you is that Mo Ali Cox is like thirty feet back. Thank you. See, I'm not. So I, it's, it's perspective. Yes, in the photo he looks smaller, but in reality, Mo Ali Cox still the largest uh, man to exist on the earth. We're still committed to that. I, See, I was willing. To, I'm committed to the truth. Andy. I was willing to 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 say this is gigantor. 2.0. Maybe I'm just throwing this out there. Maybe this is Mo Ali Cox's son <laughs> who grew so fast and he is He's half, actually six years old. He is halfway done growing. All right. All right. I'm in. Okay. <laughs> yes. That's what, that's who Jelani Woods is. By the way, they have, uh, they have three tight ends on this roster, six, six or above. They have Michael Pittman at six, four. They have a six, three Alec Pierce. Um, you know, Matt Ryan's going to have a lot of tall players to throw the ball you to. You should just throw the ball up very high. Yeah. Did you guys see the Matt Ryan camp video from yesterday? I didn't watch through it. I did. And yeah, it was, it was awesome. about five minutes long, and it was um, it was great. It was it was fun to see. Hard to dislike Matt Ryan. You can say whatever you want about whether, you know, where he stacks in and the lore of quarterbacks, but as far as, like, who just hates Matt Ryan? Just a Just a really cool, nice guy. Yeah, it was it was uh, probably a different camp than they had last year. Let's put it <laughs> let's put it that way. All right, Instagram question, Jason. I'm going to toss this one to you. Comes from Noah. Chase Edmonds or Kareem Hunt? These are two players that you've talked a lot about. Great question. Definitely Chase Edmonds. Yes. Uh, I I love Chase Edmonds. I think that he has the potential to be one of the better picks in fantasy football this year. Agreed. For where he's being picked. Uh, you know, he, he doesn't cost much. He's behind. He's like after the running back dead zone. So when you grab all you get, you get a couple stud running backs, you get a bunch of wide receivers. And then in the eighth round, you have a an explosive athlete who catches the ball on an offense that looks good, who right now through camp has been the running back one. Heck, yeah, I'm in on Chase Edmonds for sure. I am shocked that Chase Edmonds is not a, in the dead zone. Like it's very bizarre that his ADP is so much further behind these other players. So yeah, I'm, let's keep I'm, him there, people. Yeah, yeah. He's so going to be one of the bigger movers in the preseason. Yeah, no, shh. But keep Chase Edmonds' ADP low. I, I, it's fantastic. All right, let's uh, let's talk some best ball. Best ball breakdown presented by Underdog Fantasy. Each so week. Leading up into the season, we've been giving tips, insights, observations for playing best ball on underdog. Something that uh, look, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be frank. I'd love to say we all do it the same amount. It's not true. Jason's done it way more. Yeah, Jason's joined over 400 million leagues. That is accurate. Um, here's my tip of the week: If you're in a high stakes league, <laughs> yeah. Um, oh no, what happened? Oh no, yeah. If you're oh, in a no. high stakes league. Um, if you're going to accidentally miss your pick, oh no! Do not have a player who is going at the end of drafts. Huge! I star play. I star players that I want to aim for at the end of drafts. Oh, no. that, that's my normal process. This is literally the only missed pick I've had the entire off season. What round? Uh, it, uh, it was round like fourteen, okay. thirteen, okay, fourteen. So it was, it was a little bit late, but I. 
Yeah, I mean, it was. And who get? was it? It was Jarek McKinnon, who I would <laughs> I, currently. I have my my previous draft. I, I I drafted Pacheco above McKinnon, and um, then three rounds later, there was Pacheco still available to draft because um, I took McKinnon Whoopsies. on accident. So, um, just tip. Uh, don't don't cue make your picks. Late. That's uh, your tip. Tip. Make your pick. All right. Mike, what do you got for us? Uh, I mean, that's a, that's a good transition here because we want to talk about the camp hype fueling ADP and just being careful with some of these players who are on that rocket ship up to the top of the ADP. Guys like Isaiah Pacheco from the Kansas City Chiefs who is getting all the hype. He is now – the this is now. He's going as the running back 59. He is skyrocketing. And, like, the thing to remember is – if you are in now on Pacheco at running back fifty nine in your turn, like in your tournaments, if you're in a, a high money tournament, you're going up against teams that were able to take him like thirty picks later. So you're you're like you're really paying an overage in the ADP. Guys like Isaiah McKenzie, who's now going as the wide receiver to seventy two, we've seen him jump from pick two thirteen to one fifty six, and the same can be said for uh, Romeo Dobbs here. And the reminder that we want to give is Marquez Callaway, preseason <laughs> legend. Oh man, for the New Orleans and week Saints. one, right? Wasn't he a week one legend too? Well, I'm just saying, like he was. We didn't know who to draft from the New Orleans Saints, right? And we were going to let preseason shake that out. And then in week three of the preseason, he went for five receptions, 104 yard, yards, and two touchdowns. He jumped up 60 spots in ADP. Became an incredibly popular pick in the ninth round and then in week one he did catch a ball for four that's yards. right he did not do anything but in week two he caught yeah. two balls uh -huh. for eight yards total. yeah so it's just it's a cautionary tale i'm not saying like if you have a belief that 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 dobbs or isaiah mckenzie are the next big thing then like then take them but realize that now with that hype going off you're you're where you got them at the ADP versus where people already have them and they were able to load up on like good players early known players it's risky business all right that was best ball breakdown presented by underdog fantasy start playing on underdog today where you can make all of your picks uh they'll match your first deposit up to 100 bucks <laughs> if you use the code ballers just know you have to get mckinnon before jason does uh that is the code ballers might be 10th round who knows when i will go to sleep <laughs> uh but it is a lot of fun a reminder if you need an extra episode of the show which i know you do you can go to join the foot.com join the foot.com and join the community we'll have a foot cast this afternoon answering more questions, talking demolition, man, <laughs> the kinds of things we do. That is it for today's show. Thank you for joining us. We'll Take care, Foot Clan. Enjoy the football. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.